title. So, I suppose a really silly question. Have you ever wondered what's inside a regulator rectifier unit and what it does and how it does it? Stupid question, I know, because it's only people like me that wonder things like that. But my, uh, my booster engine seems to like chomping through them. I've used original Suzuki ones, I've used cheap replacement ones, and I've used expensive replacement ones. And I now have about four or five different ones that are all various states have blown up. So that's the answer to the, the question. That's what's inside one. This is one that, yes, has already blown up. And this is one of the cheapy eBay 50 quid ones. Uh, it didn't originally have that wire on. That's me putting that wire in because it appears to me having done a little bit of fault finding on it, that, that that wire was originally onto there and the track had burned out that supplies onto here. So what I'm doing out here is a little bit of playing around and trying to do a bit of learning, learning stuff for myself and think, wow, let's do a video because some of the geek, petrohead geek might be interested. So these are the three wires that come off the, I think you call it an, not really an old, yeah, it is an alternator on a, on a bike. It's basically off the coils that are on the end of the crank. So these we will see an AC on. That is the battery one. So first I'm gonna do is just, I've got an oscilloscope on my laptop, which hopefully I'll sort out a way of being able to see on here. And we'll have a look what goes on. First of the one channel down the world, and you can see it moving around as the tick over changes. I'm on times 10 at the moment, so that's picking out about 30 volts. What I'm going to do is check across all three and see they look roughly the same. I've already found this. So going across all three, one of them is only picking out about 12 volts, the other two are about 30, uh, which is strange. What I'm going to do is check resistance across all three because obviously the engine off. I'm going to do this one handed. So across two coils, I've got about half an ohm resistance. That's pretty well the same on all of them. That's the uh, suspect one, the 2000 RPM. That's one of the higher ones. Got all the bolts off to change it. A little word of warning because it's bitten me before. So remember, there's a sodding great magnet on the end of the crank, which is trying to pull that in all the time. So keep your fingers well clear when you're taking this off because it has a tendency, if, it, if your hands are oily, you might have your fingers around there and it suddenly, the magnet suddenly sort of pull it in and it slams in. You may realize this is me talking from experience and it doesn't have pinch your fingertips and wire out um or loom part out just make sure that you've de detached that from everything again so as you don't get it part way out and then that pulls and pulls it in and catches your fingers so i've got the other one on a spare one I've got to say, whilst fitting it, I did get the slight feeling of deja vu. Now, I don't know if that's deja vu because I've fitted these things a few times, you know, when having engines apart and all that. Or, I actually swapped them over at some point because I found the same problem on another generator. Anyway, what I'm going to do is hook it up to the oscilloscope again and see what happens and that might answer my question. Oh, I've got the same across all three now, which is pretty good news, and I am wondering if that um, mismatched output might have been screwing up rectifier units. Um, it's possible if there's uh, like a mismatch on the inputs that it, it could cause extra loading on one or heating and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, apart from knocking over my cup of coffee, which anyone who knows to follow this channel, cups of coffee are pretty important to me. I'm a pretty happy lad at the moment, so I'm now going to start putting this together one section at a time, measuring all this, because I will use this video for my own 
kind of reference as well so if I have any issues again I can look back at this and hopefully see how it was when it was working and then work back. Check the new regulator I've just lashed up the inputs and put my multimeter on the output and you should see a nice clean DC on there. The output voltage seemed a little bit high to me it is on no load uh, which is obviously going to make quite a difference I just looked in the uh, good old Haynes Bible, it's saying 13 and a half to 15. So, um, let's see what it is on load, but I want to test out my possibly fixed one first. Because although I think the electronics in this are the same, because this is a cheapie, um, what I'm thinking is if this is now working, I'm going to modify that to make it a bit more robust. So before I start the engine, ambient temperature. It's running for a few minutes now, it's warmed up a bit but nowhere near as much as the other one did so I assume that there's still either my bodge is uh, causing heat in that one or there's some other failures in there. I think I am going to build a new one though and use this heat sink. Most of the cost of these things is, is the heat sink. I mean the, this big bit of metal is far more expensive than the electronics inside. It's a new cheapy rectifier regulator fitted just got a cable tie it down uh, and when connected to the battery it's giving a nice 13 and a half volts out so fingers crossed i think i should rebuild the other one um make it more, more robust Let's see how that goes that'll have to be added to the, the long list of stuff to do which is uh, getting a ridiculously long list now anyway sun's out there is a uh, what's it called a an auto testing and a small car rally classic car rally up at Pobham which is about 45 minutes from here so the plan was to go up there mid-morning it's now midday so I'm gonna hit the road and go and, go and visit that hi thanks for getting to the end of the video if you're not already subscribed please do so now. Just hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button and that way YouTube will tell you when there's any new videos. We've got some big plans ahead for the channel including possibly a car build from scratch. So if you want to get involved with that, now's the time to subscribe. Cheers then, bye.